Hello, my name is Kirioth, and today we are going to take a look at day five. Day five of Warhammer Fest. In fact, today is Saturday, which means today will be the last day. We'll cover that tomorrow, of course. Today's surprise day. Yesterday was, in fact, the second 40k day. And frankly, it doesn't have to do much to be more impressive than the first 40k day, where we saw a grand total of two new things and multiple things we'd already seen before. So let's just dive in. Let's dive in and see what we've got. And what we actually have is Beast Snagger Orcs Army Box. There's enough of them to put in a Sisters of Battle style army box. And you know what? I'm kind of excited by that. It looks quite good. It looks quite good. There is quite a lot of stuff for these lads at this point. So we've already seen a few of the Piggly Squigglies, the lads on Piggly Squigglies. That's the uh, that's the, the family photo, so to speak. There's quite a few boys in there. You've got some really nice skulls, actually. Firstly, the lads on Piggly Squigglies all look quality. You've got a, uh, a knob on Piggly Squiggly right there as well. I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it. You might as well just accept it now. If you don't like it, I'm afraid that is you out of luck for the rest of the video, because that's what they're called. We are going to make that the actual name, no matter what happens. So yeah, uh, we do have, as I say, what looks like a knob on, uh, all right, on Squig, fine, which looks solid. The big metal plate over its head looks immense. Can't help but notice that one of the, <laughs> one of the, uh, one of the Squig hogs on the end there seems to have a wheel and some suspension rather than back legs. So clearly, Whilst they are adverse to being too technologically advanced, the uh, the beast snaggers they they know when a wheel is is worth a go, and I have to say the little grot on Squig with just a wheel on the back of it that is quality. The rest of the boys look pretty damn solid in my opinion. It looks very much like they've done exactly what I was kind of hoping they would do if they if they ever eventually updated the orc boy squad, which is sort out the pose more than anything else. You've still got those like spaced apart legs they've got quite wide stances but they just don't have the same sticky out arse and completely curved in spine that the normal orc boys have and it just does wonders for the for the overall presence of the model they look they are taller but they also just look like they're more capable of moving they're more imposing they're just better to look at to my eye in that picture we've got what looks like a war boss and and something else as well there, which <laughs> there is another picture of further down. Amazing hair. Just from this picture, amazing hair. So what do we actually have? Well, we do indeed have a knob. We have a knob on squig, a smasher squig, in fact, with that big metal plate in the forehead. I do like the big metal plate in the forehead. That looks kind of cool. That's a pretty solid orc as well. I'm loving the I'm loving like the integration of the uh, like prosthetic limbs into the skin like it's been stapled in on this guy i really like the way they've done that it feels like there's there's just a nice extra level of detail and care and attention in where that stuff is joined up having this skin go over the mechanical parts it looks solid and gross at the same time i think it's super well done and i think overall that is a pretty imposing looking orc there's a good amount of like there's a good amount of like definition on the muscles and there's something about the faces which look just a little bit more aggressive than your standard orc boys. The ring that he's holding onto on the squig seems to have just been directly like punched through the flesh, which is quality. He's obviously got his chopper there hanging on the back. The pistol is fantastic. I really like that. It just looks so clunky and crude, which is, of course, massively, uh, massively appropriate. Not just for orcs in general, but especially for the beast snaggers. Overall, I feel like that's a solid model. Now we also have we also have Zod Grod Wart Snagger. <laughs> it's a very difficult name to say aloud. He's a runt herd for hire, shunned by orc society for his wild and preposterous ideas. His supposedly absurd theory is that maybe grots aren't entirely useless after all. I love this guy. That is solid. It's also, I believe. I believe there was a previous version of this model, maybe not named the same thing, but a previous version of this model from like second edition or something. I really like this guy. I really like him. He's got a mental, creepy, just utterly mad scientist face, which I'm I'm absolutely here for. The hair is wild and untamed. It's very Mike. It's very like <laughs> I don't know, like bunched up, matted maybe, but I really like it. His bionic leg looks quality. 
his big old runt herding stick. You can see poking out the back there. A massive, a massive fish hook. Now, I don't know what size, like, what size uh, grot he's going after with that, but that's, uh, that's, that's significant. That, that's got some, that's got some heft to it. I also really like that big old claw he's got, which does appear to be replacing his, his other hand by the look of things. It's like a, like a mad, wizened old scientist, like a proper supervillain type. The kind of one that like goes a bit homeless and goes a bit like, uh, goes a bit full hobo occasionally. It, it kind of, it very much feels like that, which I do really like. It's got a lot, he's got a lot of character. A lot of character. He also looks pretty old for an orc as well. Obviously having a massive long beard and unkempt wild hair will do that. But there's like an interesting little bit of detail on his gun arm. Where there's like some extra folds of skin around the elbow and around the wrist as well. Little details that kind of add up to make him look that much more kind of gaunt and, and just getting on a bit. Pretty solid I reckon. Solid model. Now, along with him, we've got uh, we've got, of course, the uh, we've got, of course, the the lads, the the squig hog boys, and with them is is a little grot on a little baby squig with a wheel instead of legs, which I absolutely love. I love it. I love it. I wasn't a hundred percent on board with the crab worship yesterday. I've seen this picture multiple times, and I am, I'm, I'm, I agree. I'm there. Absolutely solid. Love his work. Look at him go. What a quality model. And I mean, the the, the rest are fine too, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, know, I don't know what it is about the comedy grot models, but I, I, I just can't help but love them every time. I think it's because it looks just as determined as the others, <laughs> but it's a fraction of the size. Like, he's really giving it some. He's properly going for it, but he's like a little weedy idiot. He's not going to do anything, but... You gotta admire the drive, the perseverance, the desire to go in and and shank someone with that large nail that he's got. It's just so good. Alongside all of this stuff is uh, is going to be a new codex as well. So the new army box offers a chance to get your hands on the full orc codex early. The standalone books release is arriving a short time later. Overall, though, orcs are getting their codex. They're getting it soon. There's a good chunk of like new models coming for them, and from what I've read, I have seen a, a couple of people say that on the stream itself, they said that, yeah, here we go, so, best of all, these models we've shown off are only half of the green skin reinforcements you'll be seeing this year. So there's there's loads more on the way. There is more on the way. And uh, as, they've, as they've said here, there's also mega armoured war bosses have appeared in all codexes before, but didn't have their own miniature up until now. Ridiculous. Why that's been the case up until this point, I don't know, but there you go. Um, but now look, a mega armoured war boss. Gone a little bit Artel W there, with the uh, with the grot on top, the grot gunner on the top of the carapace there. But you know, I'm not going to complain, because that is, a, that is a chunky boy. Look at the girth on the lad. Big, solid orc with just slabs of armour attached to him. It looks like that's a double-headed like a big chopper there you've got a couple of like uh buzzsaw style wheels on the front and then blades sorry not wheels and then an actual chain axe bit on the back i really like that both options depending on which one you want to hit people with got a bit of an ugly mug but you know what he's a war boss of course he's got an ugly mug i think that's a i think that's a good looking that is a good looking mega armored war boss for sure also means you don't have to uh, you don't have to buy the one from Age of Sigmar anymore. You can actually just get a uh, get one for forty k. And if you don't fancy having you know to put together eight billion ambots, or to get two ambots when you only need one for your mega armored war boss, that's uh, that that solves that problem as well. Because <laughs> let's face it, I think the ambot kit has been used for more orcs than it has for actual ambots at this point. Although in my case, I've used the ambot kit to make eight gargants so far. Like AOS gargants. I've not assembled an actual ambot yet. Just a plain normal ambot, I don't think. So really, it's just that's just one of the best kits that Games Workshop does. But you don't have to go that route now. You don't have to go that route because there will be one of these available. So that's nice. Now on to something that uh that I'm in two minds about, okay? 
and and before we before, before anyone goes, uh oh, hang on, whoa, 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 I've seen some discourse surrounding this. What do you mean? All right, just bear with me. So, so as they say, the people who make up the fighting forces of the Astra Militarum come from all walks of life. Some are fresh-faced recruits; others are embittered veterans of a dozen wars. Essentially, what we have here is an extra sprue that's going to be chucked into the the Cadian box, right? Which gives more options, more options for heads. More options for special weapons. I don't know why that guy has got a pair of pants on his face. I've got no clue. That, what a weird choice of colour to paint that balaclava thing. That was not the colour to go with. You don't want to look like you've got, what is it, tighty whities over your face. And yet, that's kind of what they've done. <laughs> weird, <laughs> weird colour choice. Um, I'm, loving the guy, I'm loving the guy with the playing cards and the helmet. That's quality. Uh, so yeah, we now have a an extra sprue is going to be put into the Cadian box, which basically just gives you a shed load more options. So more special weapons, more heads. The respirator does look good, but it's not the Kazakhin one, and as such, it has to be deemed inferior. Okay, let's just let's just put it out there right now. Those models are fantastic. Why they got rid of them and never brought them back, I don't know, but. I, I suppose this is because we're going to get outside of the uh, sort of the uh, Tempestus lads, so it's fine. But yeah, we've got a whole bunch of of extra options here, a whole load of of heads, and there are included, of course, both men and women, and plenty of helmeted options with respirators, non-respirators, the playing card one. You've got the uh, the one with the little Vox antenna. You've got like a really good selection in here. A genuinely good selection, and it has, of course, expanded the uh, the the range of options for the Imperial Guard. Because, as has been referenced, I don't know how many times in various bits of fluff and lore and and books and whatever, the Imperial Guard basically, if you've got a pulse and you're capable of holding the last rifle that still has a blood stain from the previous owner on it, they'll take you. It's fine. The Imperial Guard is an equal opportunity uh, recruiter in that it will take. Anyone with a pulse that is capable of standing upright and following orders up until the point that they get horrifically murdered by some sort of otherworldly demon spawn, an alien that's trying to eat your own face, or a green hooligan who is really only trying to kill you because it's fun. They don't care where you come from or what you are, they just want you on the front line so that you can feed the meat grinder. So it's not just heads, there's also weapons as well. The new sprue contains a full complement of special weapons for your infantry squads, allowing you to field soldiers carrying sniper rifles, melt guns, and more. It's honestly, genuinely, a, uh, a positive step forward. The only thing is, <laughs> is that, ah, uh, the only thing is, like, taking a look at these, how, how, like, desperate for updates do you have to be when it comes to when it comes to like a, a favorite faction or whatever of 40k when a one sprue upgrade to a 20 year old kit is enough to make you happy like here's the thing yes games workshop has made a good step forward here they genuinely have there has never been any sort of limit on whether you need to be a man or a woman to get into the Imperial Guard. There has never been a limit as to whether you need to be white, black, whatever. That has never been a limitation at any point. And yet, and yet, it's taken until, like, the kit is 20 years old for the fact that there can be women guardsmen to be represented in that kit. And in that time... Eight bajillion third-party manufacturers has been like making heads that fit onto this exact kit, which are you know not men. The fact that it's taken this long, and it's not even a full new kit either. It's an extra sprue in a twenty-year-old kit. It's not like they've built the thing from the ground up. It's not like a new kit. It's just an addition to an ancient one that addresses something that third-party manufacturers have been addressing, both in terms of weapons and in terms of head options, for literally years upon years upon years. So on the one hand, it's great because it means that there are now special weapon options available in the box, there are now more heads available in the box. Why is it taking this long, and why is it only one, one like upgrade sprue in a box that's 20 years old? 
what, what, why is it I just, I, it's just a bit baffling. It's like, okay, good, I'm glad this has happened. But at the same time, when you look at what could be done, it feels a little bit lacklustre, even though it's something that... Maybe it feels lacklustre because it should have been done so long ago. Maybe it's because it is still, the rest of it is just still the ancient old models. I don't know. I don't know. It's a weird mix of, yes, nice one, you've done it, and you've done it, but would it have killed you to do a little bit more? Like, I don't know. Maybe that's just being, like, over the top with it, but it's still, at the end of the day, it's still an old, old kit. Anyway, finally, there was also a little teaser, which seemed to be Grey Knights and Thousand Suns. I have done my due diligence and I've tested this clip. And funnily enough, this one got claimed as well, so we're not going to play it. So yeah, as it says, pardon Castell and Crow, we've never heard of this man in our lives. We have it on good authority that there's no such thing as a grey knight. Well, there's going to be such things as a grey knight because uh, that's what this release looks like it's going to be. Classic, I would imagine. Classic, uh, classic Zinch versus grey knights. Can't really get more classic than that and... Looks like that's what's going to be on the way next. Something else to look forward to there. Tell you what, let's go back up to that war boss in Mega Armor. Oh, yeah, what a lad. Solid. So, yeah, that is, uh, that's day five. Yeah, day five of the uh, of Warhammer Fest Online. We got some more 40k stuff. Got some pretty decent 40k stuff, if you ask me. Some nice orcs. Nice upgrade through for the Cadians. Could have been a whole new kit, but never mind. Yeah, some cool stuff in there. Is there anything that grabbed your eye? Anything that you are particularly looking forward to? Do you think this was a better reveal than uh, than the first 40k stream? I felt like it was personally, but I'll be interested to know what you think. Let me know in the comments down below. In the meantime, feel free to click all the things. Patreon, video subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like. Don't click it if you don't want to. And as always, there's an affiliate link in the description for Element Games, which you can use to support the channel if you would like. I leave it in your capable hands. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.